Hello student, uh, welcome to this topic of ferroelectrics. Uh, in the last class, I have discussed uh, uh, the two types of, uh, of ferroelectric materials already. And this is the third type of ferroelectric material. And this type is called as the oxygen octahedron group. The popular member of this uh, oxygen octahedron uh, group is the barium titanate. Among this group, uh, barium titanate is the most popular <clears throat> uh, ferroelectric uh, material, uh, which is well studied. Above its Curie point, Curie point, Tc is equal to 120 degrees centigrade. So this Curie point or Curie temperature is the critical temperature uh, of this uh, barium titanate material. Uh, at this, uh, below this temperature, uh, the the material will be showing the ferroelectric nature and beyond this temperature the material will lose the ferroelectric nature such a critical temperature is called as uh, the ferroelectric curie temperature so for this barium titanate uh, uh, this uh, critical temperature or the curie temperature is 120 degree centigrade and it has the and above the above its uh, curie point, uh, the barium titanate has the ideal uh, uh, perovskite uh, structure um, with a barium atom uh, sitting uh, at the center and the titanium atoms uh, at the corners of the cube and uh, the oxygen atoms uh, at the midpoints of the cube faces uh, as shown in the diagram. So. Uh, above the curie temperature, uh, it will be an ideal perovskite structure, but uh, below the curie temperature, uh, this uh, perovskite uh, structure is gets uh, destructed slightly because of the displacement of the titanium ions uh, uh, towards this oxygen ions uh, that I will explain later. And because of that reason, uh, uh, this uh, material uh, gets the a dipole moment and you can see at this diagram the barium atom is sitting at the center of the unit cell uh, whereas uh, the titanium atoms are sitting at the corner and uh, the oxygen atoms are present uh, uh, at the center of uh, each phase so six phases are there uh, and six oxygen atoms are present uh, at each phase and uh, when you look at this diagram, you may be confused that it uh, seems to be a body centered uh, because one atom is there at the center of the unit cell, uh, but uh, it is not a BCC because uh, the atom sitting at uh, the center of the unit cell is barium, but the atoms present at the corner are uh, titanium. As you know, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to define uh, or to declare uh, uh, the type of the unit cell, uh, we should look at only one kind of atom. Only one kind of atom will form the one type of cubic structure. So here, since the, since the atoms are of different kinds, uh, we can't uh, consider this as a, a body-centered cubic structure. And uh, since the oxygen atoms are uh, there at each uh, at the center of each face, uh, uh, this structure also looks like the face centered cu uh, cubic structure, FCC structure. But uh, because of the same reason, uh, this cannot be considered as a FCC structure, and hence uh, uh, this is a special kind of structure called as the uh, perovskite uh, structure. At the Curie point, the structure becomes a uh, uh, slightly stretched uh, uh, parallel to a one cube edge. So these are the cube edges are there uh, to one cube towards one cube edge parallel to one cube edge. Uh, the structure gets uh, stretched uh, and the new structure is the tetragonal. The new structure formed is the tetragonal and the stretched edge becomes the polar axis. Uh, that means uh, suppose if the uh, this uh, unit cell is uh, stretched uh, in the along the uh, or parallel to this edge uh, 
and this edge becomes the polar axis. Polar axis means uh, that is the axis uh, along which the dipoles are assumed to be uh, oriented. Next, uh, as the temperature changes from minus 160 degree centigrade to plus 160 degree centigrade, uh, this barium titanate exhibits uh, uh, three different uh, ferroelectric phases uh, as shown in the diagram below. So you can you can look at this diagram. Uh, this is uh, this is looks like a phase diagram, but it is not a phase diagram. And here we have plotted a relative dielectric constant versus a, a temperature. Epsilon, this is epsilon by epsilon naught, where epsilon is the dielectric constant of the uh, this uh, barium titanate, whereas this epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity of the free space. And this ratio is called as the relative dielectric constant. And uh, as the temperature is changing from minus 160 degrees centigrade to uh, plus 160 degrees centigrade, uh, the structure of the barium titanate uh, uh, is changing. So when the temperature is in this range, that is from minus 160 degrees centigrade to uh, minus 80 degrees centigrade approximately, uh, the structure uh, possessed by uh, this uh, barium titanate uh, is the rhomboidal structure. And when the temperature is increases uh, beyond this uh, minus uh, 80 degrees centigrade up to nearly zero degrees centigrade, uh, this structure possessed by uh, the unit cell of the this uh, barium titanate is the arthrombic. And uh, when the temperature is going uh, uh, beyond this zero degree centigrade and up to 120 or 160 degrees centigrade, Again, this curve, you can look at this diagram curve. This is the phase curve. During this phase transition, uh, uh, the, the, the unit cell of the uh, barium titanate will have the tetragonal structure. In this way, when the temperature is changing from minus 160 degrees centigrade to plus 160, plus 160 degrees centigrade, uh, uh, the structure of the barium titanate increases uh, uh, sorry, changes to three phases. Here uh, it is uh, a rhombohedral, here it is a thrombic, whereas uh, here it is a tetragonal. So this is the phase diagram. Then this variation is observed along the x axis. Along the c axis of the crystal, approximately similar kind of behavior is uh, observed. So as I explained, between 5 degrees centigrade and minus 90 degrees centigrade, the structure becomes arthrombic by slightly stretching the, uh, the original cube structure along one phase diagonal and compressing it along the other. So phase diagonal, phase diagonal means, uh, so this, uh, this, uh, this one, uh, the edge connecting this atom and this corner atom uh, max the uh, face diagonal and along this face diagonal the cubic this cubic structure is uh, stretched uh, in this uh, in this direction so along the same on opposite side here along the face uh, along this face diagonal it is uh, compressed uh, so uh, uh, structure along one phase diagonal and compressing it along the other other means other side opposite side uh, opposite faces of the that cubic cell uh, these two phase diagonals uh, are now the new um, uh, thrombic uh, axis and one of the two phase diagonals becomes the new polar axis below minus 90 degree centigrade uh, the structure changes again, uh, this time into a rhombohedron uh, formed by slightly stretching the original cube along its uh, uh, body diagonal, uh, which now becomes the new polar axis. So thus, uh, the three phases, uh, uh, tetragonal, orthrombic, and rhombohedral are all uh, uh, ferroelectric in nature. Uh, that means uh, 
when the material is uh, within this temperature that is uh, plus or minus 120 degrees centigrade uh, the the barium titanate material will be possessing the ferroelectric properties next uh, the quantity p measured experimentally is uh, the component of uh, ps uh, normal to the surface of the specimen uh, which coincides with the face of the cube here p the quantity p means it is the spontaneous polarization measured measured so at the polar axis uh, uh, as the as the polar axis changes from cube edge to face diagonal and then to the body diagonal it is found that the value of p changes from uh, ps to ps by root 2 and then to ps by root 3 indicating that a ps is essentially a constant in the three ferroelectric phases this is shown in this diagram this is that parameter p that is the spontaneous polarization it is plotted as a function of temperature degree centigrade so you can see here during this range of temperature the curve is flat that's it that indicates that uh, the spontaneous polarization is not losing is not going to die so the spontaneous polarization is hold uh, uh, in this temperature and here uh, phase transition takes place and again it becomes a flat curve and here another phase transition takes place and beyond this temperature means uh, when you are coming to uh, the temperature uh, nearly 120 degrees centigrade the the spontaneous polarization starts decreasing suddenly or abruptly so that is why it shows that uh, uh, this is the curie temperature from this diagram it is very clear that uh, uh, this is the curie temperature of the uh, this uh, barium tetonate <clears throat> that is uh, so the meaning of this is that uh, this saturation polarization is essentially constant but why these things are multiplied in order to maintain uh, sorry these things are divided in order to maintain the constant value of this ps these things these quantities are uh, divided that means uh, uh, the, the the saturation uh, polarization value is adjusted uh, inside the uh, inside the cube uh, cubic structure inside the structure of the barium titanate as it changes its shape according to temperature and in the perovskite family besides the barium titanate uh, uh, following are the other uh, notable ferroelectric materials with their respect to transition temperatures given in the bracket so these are the other prominent uh, uh, materials uh, which are showing the ferroelectric nature uh, this one is NaTiO3 that means it is a uh, uh, sodium titanate the curie temperature is 750 degree Kelvin and this one is uh, the lithium titanate LiTiO3 the curie temperature is 473 degree Kelvin and this is the RBTiO3 rubidium titanate uh, uh, the value is 520 degree Kelvin and this is the lead titanate uh, the curie temperature is uh, 763 degree Kelvin and uh, this is the potassium neobdenite uh, uh, the curie temperature temperature is 698 uh, degree Kelvin next here we will see the other ways of classification uh, so so far uh, uh, we have one classification we have shown just now where there are uh, three types of parallel tricks are possible so our way of classification is there here we have broadly only two types of uh, ferroelectric materials so ferroelectric crystals uh, are sometimes also grouped as uh, 
order disorder type or displaced type according to the fact that uh, whether the transition is associated uh, with the ordering of ions or is associated with the displacement of whole sublattice of the ions uh, of one type related to the other. So that is why uh, uh, two types of uh, two types of uh, two types of ferroelectric uh, uh, materials are present. So the order disorder class of ferroelectric so includes uh, crystals with the hydrogen bonds in which uh, uh, the motion of the protons is related to the ferroelectric properties uh, as in potassium dihydrogen phosphate and uh, and uh, also in uh, isomorphous salts. So in this class of ferroelectric materials, uh, uh, there is a proton moment which is leading to uh, some dipole moment. So the the, the displacement class of ferroelectrics includes uh, ionic crystal structures closely related to the ferro ferro ferroscrite uh, like uh, barium titanium structure. So this is the displacement class of ferroelectric materials and which is uh, just what it discussed is the barium titanate. So this is about the barium titanate structure and the other way of uh, classification and thanks for the watching.